So I have spent and played a ton of time on this new DLC, Guns, Love and Tentacles, reviewed basically all weapons and spent a lot of time also thinking about the best 5. And that's what we have today people, what in my opinion are the best 5 legendary weapons from the latest DLC 2 of Guns, Love and Tentacles. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and today I'll bring you another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Now this top 5 I will state is just my opinion. If your opinion differs in any way, let me know down below in that comments section. So let's get into this top 5 and remember people, power isn't everything. So in number 5 we have the 7th Sense. Now this 7th Sense is a seriously unique Jacob's Pistol which is a one time drop per campaign completion from a side mission called Cold Case which you get via Burton Briggs via Cursehaven on Xylagos. Now this mission alone is worth your time if you haven't done it already and the reward is an added bonus, but I won't ruin it for you. So the weapon is a lot like the Kings and Queens Cool of old and packs a nasty punch. Now it only drops off in that cryo element and does not come anointed, if it did it would definitely be up further in my list. Now this weapon's party trick is as follows. Reloading causes all spawned projectiles to hit the original target. So basically, if you fire this thing off at an enemy that doesn't die, depending on how adjusted and improved your mag size is, you get a projectile per shot, which if that target doesn't die, after reloading those spawn projectiles seek and hit that target. It is a super unique weapon, and it's what I love about this thing, but it's also powerful too, as these spawn projectiles deal the same damage, or roughly the same damage, as that initial shot. So an all round great weapon, and one I absolutely loved obtaining. Okay so moving on, and in at number 4 we have the Hydro Thrust, which is a CLV pistol, which drops from Kuku Wajak upon Nigo Nashai, and comes again only in that cryo element, this one does come anointed though. Now this Hydro Thrust seriously surprised me upon me first using it. For one it's a CLV weapon which is amazing, that's a surprise in itself, but it is amazing on another level in terms of DPS. The one letdown this thing has though is its mag size, and playing on Zane there isn't much I can do to extend it. When I say mag size I mean it's overall ammo. If it had let's say double its capacity, this thing would without doubt be one of the best weapons in this game. Its damage output is up there already. And even though it acts like an SMG, it is in fact a pistol, which is kind of a letdown because it does limit its uh, ammo capacity, which is lower than that of an SMG. And it also means you burn through that ammo before you even know it. Now its party trick is as follows, after a kill every second shot deals either shock or incendiary damage for 6 seconds, but at a 200% damage increase over standard. This results in a weapon which just melts absolutely all. I mean it fires off 3 elements at the same time people, what more do you need? I mean it is a pistol, but I don't think there's actually a more powerful pistol in the game, DPS wise. If there is, I ain't used it yet, and I mean yes, yeah, certain builds can make certain weapons a lot more powerful. I've seen a lot of dirty builds which make pistols just seem absolutely ridiculous. But if you add this onto those said builds, the results would scare you I guarantee it. So yes guys, at 4 is an incredible powerful pistol, let down by its ammo reserves. In at number 3 we have the Unseen Threat. Now this Jacob Sniper is one of 3 new snipers to this DLC, but in my opinion this is the best overall. The other 2 are the School Masher and the Cocky Bee. I mean both of those do have their perks, but this one just offers more all round. Now the Unseen Threat drops from Amak upon Cursed Haven on Xylagos, and people if you do enjoy snipers and haven't had this drop yet, farm harder because you need it. So this thing's party trick besides it being a decent sniper as standard is headshot spawning through rockets or seeking projectiles which just utterly melt, and it means boss destroying has never been so easy sniper wise. But not only that, it's also a snappy enough sniper for you to take anywhere as a backup weapon. And me not in reality being a sniper kind of guy BR3 wise, there are only a certain few snipers that stand out to me, but this is definitely one of them, and it's real unique at the same time. So yes people, the unseen threat is at the number 3 spot on my list and rightly so. Ok so moving on, we have nothing other than the Anarchy. Now I know this straight away will surprise many many people as most people would put this at a number 1 spot, and in reality guys, power wise for sure, 
OP wise for sure, this thing is untouchable in terms of DPS. And if this was a top 5 most powerful weapons, this would be top. So the Anarchy is a world drop on Xylargos and its party trick is kills or automatic reloads grant 30% additional damage but also decreases accuracy at the same time. This stacks 10 times so you can in reality easily get and hold a 300% damage increase and that's just from this weapon that's not including anything extra from your build or even an anointment on the weapon. And those 10 stacks allowed me to do some nasty things with it. Now the best thing about this is, and how you stack this, is you can shoot the floor to empty its clip. Let it automatically reload 10 times and you have those stacks. As hitting enemies doesn't actually matter in terms of its stacks. What you can't do is always switch weapons or reload the weapon yourself. That can be a pain in the ass. Also when you go to revive somebody and miss and you reload the weapon or open a crate and miss and reload the weapon, I have done that numerous times. Another thing I have a habit of doing, this being a TDO weapon, on a reload you throw like a projectile, I have a habit of shooting this and it blows up in my face and almost all the time I die myself. So that can be annoying. But if you can get over that, what you have here people is on a scale by itself. The Anarchy is probably the most powerful weapon in this game right now, there's no two which ways about it. But that doesn't mean it's my favourite. So moving on. And in at number 1 people, we have my favourite weapon from this DLC, and that is nothing other than the Clairvoyance Jacob's Assault Rifle. Now for sure this isn't as powerful as the Anarchy, but for damn sure it is by its standard incredibly powerful. What we have here is basically a sniper rifle with the mag size, ammo capacity, handling of an assault rifle. It is just another monster, and to be honest out of the whole bunch, this legendary surprised me the most. Now the clairvoyance drops from Critchy upon Curse Haven on Xylargos. It does come offering trial only but does have a few different variants including a masher version. Now for a long long time the best assault rifle in this game or the best assault rifles in this game have been weapons like the Epic Q system, still an absolute monster by the way. We also have the Chaos which is surprisingly underrated, the Laser Sploder which is kind of fell off the radar a little so I expect a gearbox buff and possibly the Breath of the Dying, I know there's a few others out there but I can't think of them off the top of my head. The Soul Render also isn't a bad weapon either. Oh yes also let's not forget about the Carrier, another underrated weapon in my opinion and one I don't see many people talking about. Now this Clairvoyance, when I pull it side by side with any of their weapons, it is easier better, almost in every single way. Its damage output is on a scale by itself which we will get to in a second, it feels super snappy and just ticks all the boxes you'd want from an auto rifle in my opinion, especially playing a game like Borderlands. Now the Clairvoyance's pirate trick is hitting crit shot spawns and sticks a projectile. That projectile later explodes and deals the same damage that initial crit shot did. What happens then is like all Jacob's weapons in this game, it ricochets another shot to a nearby enemy. Using this against Grave Ward though, that ricocheted shot actually hits Grave Ward. So for every single crit shot you hit and land, you deal an additional 200% damage. And that's without any anointment. I tested this in my video review of this weapon. And using Zane's anointment of when Sentinel is active, gain 100% of bonus cryo damage. The initial shot, the stop projectile, and that ricocheted shot, all doubling damage thanks to that cryo anointment which just makes this thing unbelievable. But it's not just good against bosses, it mounts in places like the raid, the slaughter shaft absolutely everywhere. And because there are variants which can have 20 plus in the mag, it is a weapon I feel that would fit into 95% of builds in this game and would add to them. And people that is the reason why the clairvoyance is at that number one spot, it just offers more than most, it's stupid powerful and it's also super fun to use guys. And people, those are my top 5 DLC 2 weapons. If your top 5 would differ, let me know what they are down below within that comments section. Now people, if you haven't already, definitely join my Discord linked within that video description. It's a place that has a whole host of other Borderlands 3 players. I have dedicated LFG channels, I have dedicated trading channels for all platforms. It's a place you should be a part of. If you need an item, there's no doubt you will find it there, no matter the Vault Hunter you play on. Again, my Discord is linked within that video description. But on that note guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.